life of believers and the church. The Eucharist is the testament of the passion, death of Jesus Christ. What we celebrate in the Easter that we do, it's one event. We have liturgies. I'm not a liturgist, but the bishop is the chief liturgist. <laughs> What do we celebrate? It's all one event from Holy Thursday until Easter Vigil. And that's the highest peak of life of Jesus. That's the peak of our faith in Jesus Christ. His passion, death, and resurrection. It's one event. And Jesus said, No, do whatever he does. What does Jesus tell us? On very Saturday. Do this in memory of me. Do this in memory of me. It is in his blood. Jesus is saying that unless believers come to live by his passion, and death and find their own real life in accepting the destiny that his own life has marked out as characteristic for believers or disciples. They cannot find life. They cannot find the way for the life he has come to live. They cannot find the life that Jesus has come to live. The one who said in John 10.10, 10, I have come that we may have life and have it in fullness. To attain life in fullness, a believer, more so a priest, must be bound up with a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and his self offering sacrifice. Jesus himself says that the man who eats his flesh and drinks his blood abides in Christ and Christ abides in him. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me and I in him. Fulton Sheen, I'm happy the Deacon has quoted, talked of that in The priest is not his fault. When I became a bishop, Cardinal Oman, the man who gave me a gift. And that's the book he gave me. And no Fulton, uh, Fulton she calls Judas is a candidate, a non Eucharistic disciple. A non Eucharistic disciple. This should have been the time when Jesus said, Do you also want to live? This should have been the time for Judas to have left discipleship, to go back in his former ways, to have gone away. But Judas looked to the common path, which was a custodian, and would help himself from this common path. So Judas is a chariot used to abuse the charity, the generosity of those who supported Jesus and his ministry, as we find in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, verses 1 and 3. Judas avarice, his greed. Is talked about in John chapter 12, verses 46. At the anointing, the anointing at Bethany, with pure non ointment of the feet of Jesus by men. When men anointed the feet of Jesus, Judas said, Why wasn't this ointment sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? The money put in the common bag for the poor. He said this not because he loved or cared about the poor, but because the gospel tells us, because he was a thief. He was in charge of the common fund and used it to help himself this contribution. Why is he had a denial? I leave that for you to study, to find out, research, research, research. You know, the first mention in 
the Bible that Judas Iscariot was the betrayer, and evil was not when he revealed his greed or his avarice. But the first mention of Jude, Judas Iscariot as a betrayer was when the Lord declared himself as the bread of life. Judas did not believe in the body and blood of Jesus Christ. He was an Eucharistic apostle. He should have left. But he was bent on stealing from the church. He was bent on stealing from the common world. They went to go away also. Seminarians. Why have you gone away all these years? Why have you remained with Jesus? Why have you remained in the seminary at Hayom Hazay until this very day? 